Republicans want strong borders, no crime, no chaos, and no caravans. Democrats want open borders, and they want to invite caravan after caravan into our country, which brings crime upon crime. Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jack Ford. President Trump is homing in on the issue of immigration, staking the Republican Party's fortunes in the midterms on that divisive issue. Characterizing it as an invasion of our country, the president has deployed more than 5,000 troops to the border, suggested there might be more coming as a show of force against a caravan of Central American migrants currently traveling north through Mexico. And in an interview this week with Axios, President Trump confirmed that he's planning on signing an executive order that would terminate birthright citizenship. Here's what he had to say. On immigration, some legal scholars believe you can get rid of birthright citizenship without changing the Constitution. With an executive could... order. Exactly. Right. Uh, have you thought about that? Yes. Tell me more. It was always told to me that you needed a constitutional amendment. Right. Guess what? Amendment. You don't. You don't. Number one. Number one, you don't need that. Number two, I mean, that's in dispute. you could definitely that's very much in dispute. Well, you can definitely do it with an act of Congress, but now they're saying I can do it just with an executive order. Now, how ridiculous. We're the only country in the world where a person comes in, has a baby, and the baby is essentially a citizen of the United States for 85 years with all of those benefits. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And it has to end. Um, have you talked about that with counsel? Yeah. I have. So we're in the process. It's in the process. It'll happen. So how pivotal will the president's stance on immigration prove to be when voters cast their ballots in the midterm elections? For that and much more, I am pleased to welcome two of our favorite guests here, journalist and political analyst Amy Holmes and Jennifer Rogers, a professor at Columbia's Law School and a former federal prosecutor. It's great to have you both here with us. We have so much. We've been talking, I think, for about an hour before we came <laughs> on the air here about all this. Yeah. Let's start first with this notion of an executive order to, to change what is in the Constitution. Let's take a look first at the legal component of this. If you look at the language for the, the, the 14th Amendment, it's the first sentence in it that we're talking about here, all right? And what it reads is, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside, all right? Now, if you look at that, is that something that is, is susceptible to being changed by an executive order? As you know, Jack, there are many thorny constitutional issues out there. This is not one of them. This is a really easy one. You cannot change the Constitution by executive order. You cannot change the Constitution by congressional act, uh, legislation. You can only change the Constitution by constitutional amendment. Is there anything, and, and I have, in, in watching and listening to this, and, and having taught law myself, and you have for a long time now, I'm looking, are there words? Is there something here? Because as we know, you, you parse these things. Subject are there words? to the yes. jurisdiction How about, how about that? Do you think there's any, any basis for an argument there that would allow the, the president to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not now trying to make a change to the Constitution, I'm just recognizing that the language of the Constitution has pretty much been misinterpreted for a couple hundred years. That's what they seem to be fastening on, but here's why the answer is no. You know, first you have, when you interpret legal language, you have part of that is kind of how it has been interpreted over time. But there's very, very specific and clear evidence in the record as to what that phrase means. When you look at illegal immigrants, right, the group that he's saying now their children should not be getting citizenship, they are subject to the laws of the United States. If you're an illegal immigrant, you commit a crime, you will have our laws posed upon you. You, you will be arrested, you will be tried. The one small, very small group of people who are not subject to the laws of the U.S., and this is, again, very clear from the historical record, are foreign diplomats, people with diplomatic immunity. So what happened is at the time all of these debates were going on in the 1800s, they said, well, we, we don't want the German ambassador to the U.S. to be living here as part of her job. She happens to have a child, and that child is a, is a U.S. citizen. That's not what we want. So we're going to be very carefully crafting this language to exclude those people who aren't actually subject to our laws. They're only subject to expulsion. That German ambassador's child is not a U.S. citizen. Everybody else is. They're Let, not even subject about, to parking laws. That's right, exactly. <laughs> the, the jurisdiction. You don't, have, you don't have to pay your fines there. <laughs> right. So let's talk about the political component mm -hmm. of this. As, said, as we said, these all merge. Mm -hmm. And 
looking at the, the president's comments, and I said this in the intro, it sounds as if he's saying, this is one of, of our big issues, one of my big issues, so I'm going to jump on this. I'm going to throw this thing out here. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't, but you know what? It's going to galvanize my base here, saying, look, he's going to do that. He's going to change the Constitution. Is that politically? And, and you've been involved in this world. <laughs> yes. Is that a good move? Well, when it happened, I looked at this and I thought, wow, he just pulled the pin on the political grenade and tossed it in to this midterm election. What, why? Why do you think that's well, so here, destructive sure. as opposed to being supportive right. for Republicans? Right. So here's the thing that we, we've certainly observed with uh, President Trump. He's impulsive. He uh, goes by his gut. And in the Republican primary, being hard-nosed and hardline on illegal immigration catapulted him to win the nomination. It worked for him, and it worked for him going into the November election. There were all of these blue-collar workers who were even previously Obama voters who liked his message about trying to stop illegal immigration, also trade policy. And so I think for President Trump, he saw, this issue has worked. It's worked for me. It'll work in this midterm. But here's the problem, Jack. It doesn't work for Republicans in swing districts, highly contested well, places. Why not? Uh, because immigration is such a complicated issue. I'm, I'm thinking of Barbara Comstock, for example, a congresswoman from Virginia. She's also a, a friend of mine from Washington. And she's in a district that is very mixed uh, with a Hispanic population as well, where this can touch very close to home. She's fighting for her political life. And this is not helpful. The other thing that President Trump she's did... She's a Republican. She's a Republican. This is the other thing that makes us really tough for the GOP. And we saw all of the disarray in the responses, that he broached this very sensitive issue one week before the midterm, apparently not telling anybody. And now you have all these Republican candidates having to scramble and explain their position on something they haven't thought a whole lot about. Uh, so, and if you, if you right. look at, at the confusion out there, for instance, the president said we're the only country that does right. it. Well, that's not right. Well, Canada there, too, there, but, but there's let's something be fair. like 30 let's other countries there. Then so, Europe, for example, is right. much much stricter. Exactly, on this issue. many more of that. Yeah, are. Exactly. And you can argue about the merits of this. But not I mean, there, one there, week you can make before an argument. That's election the, day. That's the that that is. Are the you surprised here. to see how many? other Republicans are saying, whoa, I'm, I don't want to be part of this conversation. Not at here. all, because, because the first thought, it's a sensitive issue. The first thought issue. might have been, okay, that the Republicans would embrace right. saying, yeah, let's jump on this. Well, and then there was also for conservatives the issue that by executive order, didn't conservatives say we didn't like that with Obama? Right. Yeah. And now we're going to say we like it with President Trump. So there's the process. Not only did they say we don't the like policy. it with Obama, they said it's illegal. Right. So, there, so it's a process issue. It's a policy issue. It's a constitutional issue that is all supposed to be debated six days before Election Day. This is very complicating for a lot of Republicans. And politically, we saw Paul Ryan. Now he's leaving. Right. But we saw Paul Ryan come out and say, you can't do this. And then we saw the president attack Paul Ryan. And then we that. saw Lindsey Graham say, the senator from South right. Carolina, I'm going to introduce legislation because I, too, disagree with birthright citizenship. So basically, it was like, who's on first? <laughs> I mean, you have the uh, you know Speaker of the House and a powerful uh, United States senator disagreeing with each other and also disagreeing with the president. So and again, as we said before, that's a discussion that people might want to have, but it's going to have to be focused on a constitutional amendment, not a piece of legislation. But, it, but, the, but the point is throwing it out there five days before. Go to the polls. All right. Well, it, look, you two are always great. You always help us understand these <laughs> things, some things which are difficult to understand, but you, you sort it all out for us. So uh, I'm going to look forward to getting you back in here, perhaps after the elections, and we can talk some more <laughs> about what's going on with it. Amy, Jennifer, always a pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jack.